happening? What's poppin'? What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another great edition of some more with the Spizzoids. I just wanna bring you guys daily sports talk, so if you're new here, if you're older here, you haven't already subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you stop what you're doing, leave a comment, subscribe, keep rocking with me. Also, make sure you check out the links down below. The first link is to buy me a coffee to help fuel this channel. The second link is to shop the official one with the Spizzoids, a merch collection, get your classic tee, the wavy tee, or the flower dye crew neck that I've been rocking lately. This comes in black, white, and green. And lastly, guys, turn your notification bells on so you don't miss a single video or a single live stream. But let's get into the topic today. So earlier in the week, I did an Eagles offensive rebuild. Today is gonna to be the Eagles defensive rebuild. A lot has changed, but a lot will stay the same on defense. I feel like it's a lot of um, low key battles that's gonna go on on um, offense just because of the addition of AJ Brown um, in the wide receiver room. Guys gonna be fighting for that wide receiver three, four spot. Um, and then in the running back room, it's gonna be some battles um, in the running back room as well. But guys, we gotta talk about the defense because the defense is where I'm most excited, but the defense is also where we have the most question marks going into the season. So let's talk about the brand new defense that's gonna be taking the field for the Philadelphia Eagles in 2022. So let's start off with our additions. So this off season, we added Jordan Davis and Kobe Dean and linebacker Kyron Johnson out of Kansas in the draft. Now in free agency, we added Kaiser White um, from the Chargers, linebacker, and we added Hassan Reddick as well, outside linebacker, backslash edge rusher from the Carolina Panthers. Now we did lose some guys. We lost Alex Singleton, we lost Rodney McLeod, and we lost Steven Nelson. Now let's talk about how these additions and these subtractions are gonna change the team for next season and what we still need to be looking out for. So let's start in the secondary. In the secondary, the the we did not add a cornerback and we did not add a safety. We lost Roddy McLeod, we lost Steven Nelson, but we did not add a cornerback or a safety in the draft. We did not add a bona fide cornerback one in the draft. We did sign some undrafted free agents that's gonna be able to battle it out at training camp. Um, we talked about them before in an undrafted free agent video, but I honestly might do a single video just on the cornerbacks. Um, and Tyron Matthew ended up signing with the Saints. So let's talk about the secondary. Right now, Marcus Epps is looking like he is going to be um, the starting safety next to Anthony Harris. We did re-sign Anthony Harris. So Marcus Epps, he had a very productive year for us last season. It's looking like this is his opportunity to really come out, break out, and shine for the Philadelphia Eagles. We still can add somebody, <clears throat> but as of right now, it doesn't look like we're gonna be able to add a game changer. So this is opportunity for Marcus Epps to step up. So right now in this, at safety, it's looking like Marcus Epps and of course Anthony Harris are gonna be our starting safeties. So when we go to the cornerback room, like I said, nothing really changed in the cornerback room. We signed a slew of undrafted free agent corners and some that we threw some money at as well. But like I said, we did not sign a bona fide cornerback too, or there's no guy that's looking like, oh, this is his spot, it's a lock, this is his spot. So what does this mean for our returning guys? Well, Zach McPherson, our former fourth round pick, it's looking like Zach McPherson, it's, it's not a lot for him, but he's looking like the favorite at cornerback too. Now the cornerback position is gonna be the most interesting position to watch at training camp because outside of Zach McPherson, we do have a lot of other young hungry dogs that's gonna to wanna to step up and take that cornerback two spot. So that corner spot is gonna be the, the, the most entertaining and most intriguing position to watch at training camp because those guys, like I said, Zach McPherson is gonna to wanna to have a shot at cornerback two. And then don't forget, we got Tay Gowan, we got Kerry Vincent, we got Tay Gowan, I believe in the trade for Zach Ertz. We got um, Kerry Vincent late last year out of LSU um, in the draft. We also have Mac McCain, um, who we signed and re-signed a billion times last season. All of those guys, and, and then plus, um, we signed two undrafted free agent corners that we gave money to. So that's like five guys. Honestly, that's six guys right there. Yeah, that's six guys right there that's gonna be battling it out, trying to get that starting cornerback two position. And last season, y'all, we love signing freaking corners, literally. So who knows, we could be adding more corners um, this off season because last season it seemed like a new corner was on the roster every other week. So like I said, that cornerback two position is going to look different. Last season, it was Steven Nelson. He moved on, um, and now it's next man up. Which one of these guys are gonna step up and claim that spot for their own? Because like I said, Zach McPherson is looking like the front runner, but it's still <laughs> wide 
open, which is not really a great thing, you know, for us. But let's move on to the defensive line. I know I jumped linebacker, but whatever, we're gonna get to it. Let's jump to the defensive line. So like I said, the defensive line is gonna be where the dogs are at. And like I said, because our defensive line is so beefy, it's okay, it's not, it's not okay, but it makes it better that, you know, the defensive line is gonna make up for some of what's going down in the secondary. It's gonna make up for some of the mistakes that we'll have early on in the secondary because of young and inexperienced guys. The defensive line, we added Jordan Davis, guys. We added Hassan Reddick as well to the defensive line. And how is this Jordan Davis um, addition going to affect our defensive line? It's going to make it extremely stellar. Now, um, Javon Hargrave, Milton Williams, Fletcher Cox, and Jordan Davis are going to be um, rotating out on the interior defensive line, which is going to be just a rotation of dogs. You know what I'm saying? Now, Javon Hargrave is entering a contract year. So some people wanted to say like he was a loser of the draft because he had a great year last year, Pro Bowl year last year. And then we draft Jordan Davis, who's a dog, mountain of a man and freak athlete. I don't see it that way. Jordan Davis is going to attract so many double teams, guys. That's just going to let Javon Hargrave eat even more. And the same goes for Fletcher Cox and Milton Williams. Jordan Davis is only going to run their numbers up even more. And just like I said, our rotation is so freaking deep. It's crazy at defensive tackle. Now, um, last year, Javon Hargrave attracted some double teams here and there. He led our team um, in sacks as well. I believe he led the team in sacks. Uh, but there was one period of time where Javon Hargrave was just racking up the sacks and then he started um, getting his own double team sometimes here and there. So those guys are just going to be, it's just going to be a symbiotic relationship where they're all just, they're, you, there's just so many dogs um, between them four that they're all going to be able to eat and they're all going to be able to get theirs and they're all going to make each other better. So I don't think this is necessarily like a loser situation for Javon Hargrave. Uh, because, like I said, Jordan Davis is going to be attracting so much freaking attention. Javon is going to be able to get some of that attention off him, and he's going to be able to eat even more. So the interior defensive line, last season our interior defensive line um, got us the most. We were bottom in the league in sacks, and most of our sacks came from the interior. We wasn't getting any pressure off the edge, and I, I feel like the interior defensive line is still going to be the leader for us, which I'm fine with. Um, but moving on to defensive end, now we did need to get an edge rusher, in my opinion, in this draft. And I was a little surprised we didn't get an edge rusher, not even just with the first round pick, but with um, in the second round, later rounds, whatever. But it is what it is. So we did get Derek Barnett and us, we did re-sign Derek Barnett and us not drafting uh, uh, an edge rusher really helped Derek Barnett because, you know, that's more play time for him, which that's, I don't like. But Derek Barnett is someone who we know just needs to step up this year. We got Hassan Reddick, um, edge rusher, outside linebacker, but he's used so, so much off the edge and so much as a blitzer. Um, Hassan Reddick is definitely someone who's gonna come in and help us get some more pressure off the edge. So we're gonna see him as well. And then also Brandon Graham, who spent time hurt last season. He did come out and talk to the media the other day and was saying he's looking really good and he's looking like he's ready to go. So we just added um, Hassan Reddick there off the edge. Also to note, we're going to get into the linebackers, but Kyron Johnson, our linebacker out of Kansas, he was used as an edge rusher at, at Kansas as well. So he played some time on the outside, even though he was a linebacker, he is a hybrid and he is versatile as well. Basically you can kind of look like at him like a baby Hassan Reddick. So even though he is a linebacker, we might be, you know, using him off the edge and blitzing him as well. So that is something to look out to um, for with Kyron Johnson. But y'all, let's look at the linebacker room. Now the linebacker room is one of my favorites. It went from zero to freaking hero in my mind. And this is another situation where, you know, the front um, line is gonna help out the secondary, but also the linebackers in the middle is gonna help out the secondary as well. Now that we have some dogs at linebacker. Now we did lose Alex Singleton um, and TJ Edwards was getting pretty much all the play time last season. But now with our additions, TJ Edwards is looking like someone who is going to, he's still gonna get play time, but he's not going to nearly get as much play time as he got last season. So at the linebacker room, we added like um, Kaiser White from the Chargers in um, the off season as a free agent signing. Um, we got Kyron Johnson, the linebacker from Kansas that I just told you about. Kyron Johnson, like I said, is somebody who can 
um, play on the edge as well. And then we got N'Kobe Dean, who you all know in the third round, big dog. Um, he is undersized, but he is NFL ready. So Kazir White and N'Kobe Dean are looking like our starters because Kazir White has been starting and thriving for the Chargers. And N'Kobe Dean, like I said, he is battle tested. He might be undersized, but he's battle tested. He's ready to go. Um, like I said, playing on the championship defense, best player, best defense. And even if people want to say Jordan Davis made N'Kobe Dean look good, uh, we got them both. So if Jordan Davis made N'Kobe Dean look good at Georgia, then N Jordan Davis going to make N'Kobe Dean look good in Philly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can't lose. So it's looking like um, Kaiser White and then N'Kobe Dean. Um, and then TJ Edwards is, of course, still going to get play time, but just not nearly as much. And then, of course, we want to see what this guy, Kyron Johnson, can do out of Kansas. That's going to be interesting to see at training camp because we do still have some young um, linebackers that, you know, still trying to make a name for themselves and still break out like Davion Taylor. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see the linebacker battle at training camp, too. But, y'all, this training camp is going to be freaking lit. Like I said, we still have some holes, and the holes is really at cornerback and safety. And like I said, we'll see who steps up at training camp. But this defense is really looking up, in my opinion. Um, we do have a glaring hole at cornerback, too, and that's something that we're going to have to figure out, and these guys are going to have to step up. But like I said, our defensive line is going crazy. Um, the linebacker room is looking really good, so we just have to tweak and find some figure out who's going to step up and be cornerback too. But y'all, our defense is looking really great. I'm excited to see what these guys look like on the field. But y'all, this is our new look defense. Um, and like I said, the cornerback position is the one we're going to really be looking out for. It's about seven guys. It's going to be six or seven guys. It's going to be battling it out, trying to be that cornerback too next to Darius Slay. And we're going to see who it is. But y'all, make sure you like this video. Make sure you leave a comment. Make sure you subscribe. Keep rocking with me. Check out the mini links down below. Buy me the coffee to help fuel this channel. Shop the official smell of the Spizzoas, a merch collection. And until I talk to you guys next time, bye.